Welcome to another 160th anniversary playthrough. This time we are playing Rutherford's Farm. This was a battle in July uh, 20th, 1864, where the retreating Confederates from Early's Raid were putting up small skirmish stands uh, at the, uh, as they returned back to the valley. We already signed one with Cool Springs, fought on the 18th, where Crook and the 6th Corps, some of the 6th Corps under Wright, tried to venture across the Shenandoah to uh, try to capture a bridgehead and uh, attack early. This is another scenario here where um, part of Early's troops, in this case um, Ransour, is putting up a defensive stand just above Winchester, just uh, above Winchester, but below um, Stevenson's Depot, along the Valley Pike here at a place called Rutherford Farm. And this battle took place, like I said, on the 20th. It was really a, a, a skirmish because what uh, Ramsour was trying to do was try to lure him, lure the Union commander, Avril, right here into a trap but uh, unfortunately that was it was spotted and um, Avril still pressed an attack on them but the way that Ramsour is set up defensively as you can see here at this angle made this section very vulnerable up here so uh, ultimately in the end it was a, a Union victory Ramsour had to uh, fall back um, Avril didn't have forces to press them, um, but they did basically hold the pike and force Ramsour back into Winchester. Now, strategically, it didn't do much because the rest of Early's army of the Shenandoah was already past Winchester, as well as the wagon trains and everything else. So this was just kind of a, kind of a last minute fight that Avril um, pushed into it by Vaughn, one of the cavalry commanders over here. Uh, put up this fight and actually you know the one one thing that did hurt the confederates was the loss of manpower because they did suffer quite a bit in manpower uh, losses union did as well but union still had more troops than the confederates so anyways we're going to play through this this is a great little scenario i also recommend this as a learning scenario for learning the great battles of the american civil war series uh for multiple reasons one you can see right here small footprint uh, we are bounded by these lines. We're not even using the whole map over here. So it's a very small footprint. We are also using all different types of troops. We've got infantry, we've got cavalry over here, 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 back there. We've got artillery here in the center and artillery back there as well. So you got a flavor of the whole thing. You are using pretty much all the core rules. Uh, there is a little bit of special rules not that much um, nothing nothing real crazy that you have to remember other than the the line that I've drawn around here um, you know just a couple things these guys start an attack this guy starts in reserve the Confederates have fatigue already um, because of their retreat um, the only other one that's that's very interesting is that the Union brigades get a free change of orders uh, without a dice roll if they're doing a brigade order change once per turn so that's kind of interesting gives them a little bit more flexibility in terms of what they can do what they, uh, they want to do um, in battle here so pretty straightforward in terms of victory conditions uh, again this is pretty straightforward it's all the basic victory conditions so we're looking to BCE or uh, DCE um, units so that uh, they're, they're combat ineffective uh, either brigades or divisions and we will get the standard you know five points for for each uh, within there cavalry uh, individual strength point losses will be one point artillery same thing one point losses within there and then the only scenario specific thing here is the fact that the farm Rutherford farm if one side controls this at the end it actually elevates the victory conditions um, 
for that side. So if, if the union controls this and has the victory, they will get a, you know, a, a mar let's say a marginal victory. They will go up to a substantial, and vice versa for the Confederates there as well. So that's it. Uh, a very straightforward, very simple scenario to play. Um, it's also short. It's five turns. We start at the 1500 turn. Um, we wind up at the 1900 turn as dusk settles in. Uh, usually when I get to the dusk turns with this, because I've played this several times, and as I said, it's a great learning scenario. Usually at the dusk turn, not much is going on. Usually it's settled uh, a turn or two before that, uh, but there could be some some interesting stuff going on there at the end as well. It's always interesting right to the end with it. So, I'm trying to think of other things. If you have any introduction to the historical scenario, um, told you what we're going to be playing. In terms of strategies I'm going to use, is probably similar to what strategies were used by both sides. I'm going to try to, I think, from the Union perspective, push this exposed left flank. Uh, from the Confederate perspective, try to draw Union in and then move them up over here to try to flank them. It's going to be kind of a flanking attack for for both sides and just who, who can outflank the other is important. Uh, may have some cavalry skirmishes on the sides. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, it goes with that as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much where we're at with, uh, with this. And uh, just wanted to give you an introduction to this. So we'll go right into turn one uh, or the 1500 th uh, 3 p.m. turn on July 20th 1864 so I'll be right back with that okay back with the end of turn one 3 p.m. turn um, July 20th 1864 so where we're at with this is uh, Right here, um, the Union has had a very good turn, um, and I'll show you why. Let me move over to show you the activations and how the chits drew here for this turn. You can see over here, second cavalry, second cavalry, three second cavalries, then second uh, Army of West Virginia three times, second cavalry then the Confederates, and then finally the second West Virginia again. So the Union had both of his uh, brigades, the cavalry and infantry, moving well before the Confederates could even get moving on their own. So with that, you can probably guess what, uh, what happened. Um, first off over here, and we'll just zoom in here just a little bit so you can see it. Over to the left, that's where most of the action happened. And you can see here, Powell, the second cavalry, was able to position his second West Virginia and then his first, uh, third West Virginia into the woods and get around the flank of Lewis's brigade over here. And that made it tough for Lewis, although he didn't initiate the attack and didn't get around there. It was actually the 9th West Virginia here, as well as uh, the 14th and 91st Ohio up here that actually initiated it. And actually the, the 9th was actually the one that assaulted here. And they went after two units that are now not on the board anymore. First, it was the 2nd, where are you here? There you are. Uh, second Sharpshooters right there. They were actually eliminated uh, with casualty losses from firing. And then this one, 57th North Carolina, was lost when it was retreated out as it was attempting to be shocked uh, by the um, first or third West Virginia over here with Powell. So they were actually in this hex here um, 9th West Virginia came up, uh, took out the sharpshooters, and then the uh, um, 57th North Carolina retreated, Powell came up, and then finished them off. 
Lewis, once they activated, folded back his line over here because his his flank was now really in the air, and uh, he took the 54th back. Uh, took fire as they left. Fortunately, it didn't do any damage to them. And then the 21st, 21st North Carolina has refused their flank right here, you can see, uh, to kind of hold hold the line over here. Now, I'm not sure how we're going to recover from this, um, other than what I'm doing overall with the uh, Confederate cavalry. So let me zoom out and show you. Up here, Vaughn, who is back here in this area, came up and circled around to threaten uh, Powell's flank up here. And then over here to the east, we have um, Mudwall Jackson threatening the Union right flank, which is just held by the 1st West Virginia over there. They got into position. They didn't get a chance to change, or they couldn't change their uh, brigade orders. Uh, for that turn, but hopefully, and now they're out of command, so it's going to be a little bit trickier for them to, to change, but they're going to try to threaten the flanks over here. Maybe they can push back here and threaten the artillery that has moved up for the for the Union, and they started shelling these troops here as well as the artillery here. Nelson has, um, his batteries here have been trading fire with them as well as the infantry in the woods um, over there with some effect. You can actually see Nelson actually scored a step loss on one of the unions. The unions suffered two points of strength points loss over there. Confederates obviously have four points with the two units off the board. So the union is, union attack is very very good. Confederate is, Confederates are trying to respond. You notice they are still in attack mode here. Uh, that's what they're supposed to be to start the scenario. A um, little bit of a hindrance over here for them because they're such lower strength and the Union is much higher strength, about double overall. Um, but hopefully now with the secretary coming up, we're going to take, um, take uh, the, who's, what's, his here? what's his name, Lily, out of reserve and get him into the action to try to push back up here. We'll throw a couple of regiments uh, up, up there, maybe more than a couple, but try to up there to, to push back Powell and do some damage. And then we got to start thinking about potentially bringing Johnson forward as well with Woodwall Jackson's cavalry uh, over here to threaten the, the flank. Meanwhile, holding off against the Union up here. From the Union perspective, they need to push their attack. They need to watch out for Vaughn and Jackson and then kind of hold out here in the middle as they're pushing against Lewis over here. Um, if they can wreck his brigade, which now they've got two units lost, he's got a total of um, five units, so he's got three units in good, good order, but if, he, if they knock out one more, he will, he will be in trouble. So we'll see what happens. So again, this is the end of turn, uh, 3 p.m. turn, uh, first turn for Rutherford's farm. Stay tuned for the 4 p.m. turn and see what happens. Hello, and we're back with another session of the uh, Battle of Rutherford's Farm, April 20th, or excuse me, July 20th, 1864. Uh, using Death Valley uh, game, Great Battles of the American Civil War, GMT. And this is uh, end of the 1400, or end of the 1600, 4 p.m., 1700, 5 p.m. turn. And here's where we're at. Quite a bit of action this turn. Confederates <coughs> got the initiative, and I'll just take a look at the chits over here. I'll bring you over here first so you can see this. You can see the Confederates <coughs> got the cavalry moving first, and then they got a string of chits that came out. Union got a string of chits that came out and then cut it back and forth here at the end. And that kind of shows you where um, you know, where we're, we're at at this particular moment with this. So here we could see a couple things have happened. Confederates launched an attack over here with Jackson, came up, pushed back the artillery, pushed back the 1st West Virginia, 
them over here. No casualties, but just they retreated back off of here. And then Johnson came up as part of their attack to attack up here. But <clears throat> this is where we kicked in the reserves with Shoemaker right here. Came up with both the 8th Ohio and the 14th Pennsylvania. These folks are armed with Spencer carbines, which are deadly at close range and just annihilated one of Johnson's regiments. That was the um, 5th, 5th North Carolina, which just totally wiped out um, delete and um, removed from the board. And then the 12th North Carolina is collapsed uh, from the fire that they took within there. The one saving grace, they did get some fire back against them and eliminated two <coughs> cavalry strength points for two victory points on there as well. But the center and Union uh, left have, have kind of held out under this, <coughs> this attack. Over into the center, uh, Nelson, now that he has no artillery, has shifted to, per to go after uh, Duval and the attack over here. Um, they've just shifted around. Of course, they're blocked over here, so they really can't see much. They can potentially see over to Powell um, over here, so maybe the next turn they can take some shots at it. Ariel is located in the woods here with, with the um, 34th Ohio, providing more fire support for uh, preventing Johnson's attack over here. Duval has continued to push back on Lewis. Lewis has had to bend back even further, um, disordered here. He had to come back over here. Now these guys are, are refused at this point. Um, the 9th West Virginia is refused over here. Their attack kind of stalled a little bit once Lily came up as part of um, part of a counterattack over here. They came out of reserve and got some of their fatigue off and was able to, you know, push into there. But <clears throat> the cavalry over here, the first, uh, excuse me, the third West Virginia was able to um, slow up the attack and hold the flank. Meanwhile, Vaughn, as part of the same attack that Jackson did over here, came through and pushed back the other West Virginia, second West Virginia over here, with kind of a, a, um, a running cavalry battle um, off of uh, Welltown Road back into here. Finally stabilized and then we brought over the uh, 14th West Virginia, yeah 14th West Virginia because they've collapsed <coughs> to try to uh, stabilize that back flank over there. So a little bit of a back and forth kind of uh, washing machine style attack or one side goes the other side goes and kind of back and forth against them. Ramsour is back here. He had recovered the 21st um, over here. He's kind of stayed back uh, over here, but um, he should be getting back into the mix here pretty soon because he's got uh, kind of spread out units. Now these guys are in command. Johnson's in command because of the road. He's in command over here. It's one, two, three, four, five. Um, but Lily is not in command, so that's going to inhibit Lily, but they're still on the attack over here, so they should be still okay in there as well. So that's the end of the 1400 turn. Nobody is BC, uh, BCI'd uh, yet on here. We've got a couple close. Lewis has lost two regiments, so two out of their five regiments are lost. One more, they'll be, um, well, they'll be BCE. Over there as well. Johnson has taken some hits over here as well. They're not quite there yet. They lost one regiment. For the Union, uh, we've got one collapsed up here. Um, that's the 9th. They're still in pretty good shape. The cavalry is still in pretty good shape here as well. We do have some victory points. Both sides have two victory points. Uh, Jackson lost the uh, cavalry unit there, and so did Vaughn over here. And then, of course, two of Shoemaker's. Uh, points over there make up the losses. So victory levels now is at 2-2 two to two, with nobody BC'd yet. Coincidentally, Rutherford's Farm, nobody has been through that yet. Um, Johnson came up here from the flank, so this is still open, so there's no shifting of levels yet as that remains open. So that will probably change next turn. Fatigue is a big thing for the Confederates. Um, 
that's why a lot of these losses had occurred because they failed second uh, disorder and lost strength points and then collapsed and so forth and so on down there. We'll see how that goes. We're trying to balance that out, not letting them get too much fatigue or trying to incur too much fatigue. Union has occurred a little bit of fatigue. Duval and um, actually all of them have fatigue now here. You can see that uh, Powell has it here as well. I think Shoemaker, yeah, Shoemaker incurred fatigue as well. But obviously they're still at okay. They can incur a couple more levels before it starts having impact. Or one more level still because before it has impact on them. So with that, there we have it. The end of uh, 1600, 4 p.m. turn, on to 5 p.m. turn. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.